Hi, Daryl, and uh, great to have a conversation with you again. We've just had quite a lengthy one before we started recording, which was great. But uh, yeah, it would be really nice if you could just share your experiences and the sequence which led to realization and the way things are looking for you now as well. Okay, uh, thanks, David. Um, yes, for me, uh, I would say it, it really started for me when um, I was in, in my in my early twenties. Um, I kind of always um, felt like I was a slightly different person, um, despite the fact that I had a fairly normal life. But I had a very inquiring mind, so I always, I was always uh, searching for answers. And we, we as a family never came from a, a spiritual family at all, and we, we weren't religious in any way. So in those early years, I actually turned to science. I thought, well, science would solve, would solve my, my problems. Mm. I had these questions, and, and I thought, well, science, science would help me with the answers. So you could say in, in my mid-20s, I, I started, even though I, I'm not a scientist by training and I'm definitely um, not all that clever in that regard, but I started sort of researching science to try and say, what is the meaning of life? Hmm. Um, I actually remember even writing a whole sort of whole pages of information and it was, was you know, what's, what's it all about? This was the... So I would say that if I look back, that was the real, the start of my search. I was about 25 then. Um, and uh, not surprisingly, science, other than the fact that science was really complicated, it didn't really answer any of my questions. You know, science doesn't answer any of the sort of real existential problems that, that we have. Um, you know, it doesn't ask, answer who, who am I and why I'm here and is there a God? It doesn't answer any of those questions. Um, so I continued with, with sort of the science and, and, and with my, my life. And um, I kind of always knew that I had, a, had a, an active mind. So, so with the inquiry, I had this active mind. And I sort of intuitively knew that this um, active mind was a problem, that I needed to solve it somehow. So uh, I think this was about the late... Yeah, when I was in my late twenties, I, I then bought a book on meditation, and I and I started. Well, I said, well, the one way to solve this problem of my mind is to try and stop the thoughts. And I thought, well, that's what meditation was. So um, I kind of started meditating, but I never really, um, I never really got into the spiritual side of things. Um, I was I was meditating and continuing with my life, and then. So I had this sort of background of science and this meditation. And then um, the sort of real thing that, that started it all off was when uh, Deepak Chopra came to South Africa. And he, um, and he was doing a talk. And, and she, someone suggested to me that I've got to go and see him. He was quite a famous uh, person in those days. Yes. Uh, th this was probably uh, back in 2001, 2002. Yes. And uh, so... Uh, and the amazing thing with the with the universe or the, 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 the is that tower ties every it gives you everything you need and, and Deepak Chopra was the absolute perfect person to tie my understanding of science with spirituality. Yes. I mean, I, I think there was no one better. And um, so I went to see a talk by Deepak Chopra, mm -hmm. and I was completely blown away. I mean, it was. It, it, there was this whole world that had opened up to me, uh, you know, a world that I didn't really know existed. Um, mm. um, that I'd, I had no idea that thoughts can affect reality and mm. and and and, and, uh, and these concepts. So that was really the start of it. Um, I I I can't I remember coming back from Deepak Chopra and just being uh, my life had changed. But it, um, the interesting thing with Deepak Chopra is it wasn't very spiritual. Um, there, there, there wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a spiritual group or anything. It was, he mm. just introduced me to his concepts. Yes. Um, and then uh, probably a month or two later, I heard, I was listening to a talk radio station uh, on our, I was driving somewhere and I was listening to a talk radio station. And this person with the kind of Indian accent uh, 
uh, then said the interview, I just caught the tail end of the interview and the, and the interview asked um, if, if, he, if he was always happy. And the Indian person responded by saying that he was always happy and he never had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, so under all circumstances mm. so this like really i mean i'd never heard of any indians or indian gurus or anything like that mm. anyway so that i ended up contacting that person and uh he was in south africa and he had left but mm -hmm. uh anyway he became um i became a devotee of his he was an indian guru and mm. i'm not going to mention his name but uh we called him swamiji and i was totally devoted to him mm. so in in a in a fairly short time, I'd gone from science to Deepak Chopra to uh, guru, uh, guru yeah. worship, you could yes. call it. Uh, and I, yeah, I was about 30 years old. Um, so yeah, I continued with, um, with the Swamiji and I actually wrote him a letter once uh, saying, well, please could I become, I didn't know how to join. You know, I thought well, mm -hmm. I'd write him a letter, please could I become your devotee. <laughs> uh, it was quite bizarre and he was in i think in europe at the time and mm. i hadn't met him and um and i never received a response but anyway it was quite funny <laughs> um yeah so then i went through this period of uh of sort of following a guru how did and, you follow uh, him excuse me how did you follow him did was he well there was a group of there was three of us there was only three or four of us in southern in cape town actually mm. and uh we we kind of got together um and we did week, weekly satsangs. Mm. And I could call him from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, this was kind of before YouTube and, and things like that. So there was no, um, you know, if you wanted to get hold of someone, you had to phone them. Yes. Um, but um, he didn't really write many books or anything like that. And, and all these books were sort of more on the Hindu sp spirituality type, mm. Bhagavad Gita type things. Yes. Um, but I understood the, the concepts, uh, the, the sort of key concepts and that, but uh, it was very disruptive in my life because I, you know, I was now suddenly a vegetarian and, a, mm. uh, and I'd stopped uh, alcohol and things like that. And th those were a big part of my life at that point. Um, mm. You know, I was young, we would go partying and everything. So when you suddenly become a vegetarian and you, you're not going out partying and you're not drinking alcohol you know you suddenly automatically look quite different mm. so it was quite a difficult period for me um but uh but i um yeah i learned a lot uh it, it was interesting because he never actually gave discourses as such we were just mm -hmm. around him um yeah but there was actually one occasion i remember it was the most powerful i saw so i followed him for three years and i saw him a few times uh, over that time the most powerful time I had with him actually was when I was just sitting down next to him and no words were spoken. I mean, it sounds a bit corny in the, you know, mm. like the Ramana Mahashi type thing. Yes. But they're, they're really, it's a very, it was just this tangible piece, you know. Mm. Um, you know, in, in contrast to what one sees on, on YouTube and that now where there's, there's always someone talking, someone asking questions and someone answering questions. Yes. Uh, that was just a sitting, you know, and, and, and he, he was a bit, of, in the end, it turned out he was a flawed individual. He wasn't the God that I thought he was. Um, but he was most definitely, uh, to some extent, realized. I think he, uh, he was accomplished, there's no doubt. Um, but, um, yeah, that, it was an incredible period because we, I went on retreats uh, to Eastern Europe, or I went on one retreat to Eastern Europe. Um, I also started uh, at that time having some really interesting experiences. Um, I'll, I'll mention, I'll, I'll mention sure. them. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, just out of the blue, this was after I'd probably been following him for about a year. I'm, I'm not attributing any of these experiences to him as such. It was probably just um, more, uh, my body was more susceptible to, to more energy. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it started, the first time that it started was when I, uh, I would, wake up in the middle of the night and my body would be shaking um, and it would be shaking uncontrollably not just a sort of mild shiver yes i mean it shook so violently i mean i've never experienced anything like that and um and then i, I the first time it happened I, I i rose out of my body just out of my bed about a meter or so mm -hmm. and, and i got a hell of a fright <laughs> <laughs> and, and next thing i was back in my body 
Um, and then after a while, I kind of, well, then I thought, well, I hope that happens again. Mm. It was really, I mean, I kind of realized something was up. You know, I hadn't been yes. looking at it. And, uh, and then about a week later, I woke up again to the shaking. Um, yeah, and then I rose, uh, you know, up out of my bed. I, I, you, I, anyone who's done it before, you, you go through this, the roof, you can actually feel the change in the roof. You can actually see yes. the, the inside of the roof, which you've never been before. Yes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then you kind of rise and rise up into space. And, and at that point, um, well, at, at that point, normally it's such an incredible feeling. You just uh, Don't go straight you back into your body. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But um, over time, I kind of got the hang of it. Uh, and it went on for uh, a long time, uh, yeah. months and months, maybe years. And, and slowly I got more control. And, uh, and I actually um, sort of visited some interesting places, actually. Um, some very, <laughs> very interesting oh, places. Oh, good. Would you um, like to tell us about them? Um, well, I, yeah, so the, the most incredible thing was uh, when I, I woke up to the shaking and uh, um, it was more than normal. And I, I rose up again through the roof of the house and into this kind of uh, like vortex, like a um, kaleidoscope of color. Yes. Um, um, it was, I, I'd never experienced that since, mm. but it, it just basically sucked you up through a kaleidoscope. Yeah. I mean, it's like the reverse Alice in Wonderland on the yes. whole, just you know, going in the yes. other direction. Yes. Um, and then I sort of popped out in this, this completely different world, you know, and, mm. uh, and as I popped out there, there was this, uh, this, um, this woman there, um, and uh, she was like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my life. It was, um, it wasn't beauty as in it was, it's, it's the sort of, it's probably that archetypical goddess type beauty mm. sort of thing, yes. you know, that I was tuning into to mm. some extent. But uh, um, yeah, so, and, and there was just this feeling that she was a guide and there to kind of show me around. Mm. Um, I mean, it really, to me, it really felt like I was in some kind of he he heavenly realm because there yes. was um, an unbelievable peace that mm -hmm. I've never come close to, uh, not, not even mm. remotely close to since. Mm. Um, and interestingly enough, we did come across, uh, I wasn't there very long, but uh, I came, across uh, some other people, so to speak, there. And any communication, I, I remember the communication was, oh, is this your first time here kind of thing, which is a little bit strange. But the communication was telepathic. There was, yes. there was no talking. You know, it yes. was quite good. Um, and then the, la the last sort of thing I'll say about the, this was that the, um, so the, yeah, so I, I the, this guide, and she gave me her name, which I still know now. I've always think she'd love to see this person again. Um, but she was, you know, it's that purity and innocence. And, 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 and then I had a slightly uh, a thought, you know, a, a slight thought of desire. Like, I mean, like a little flittering of desire popped into my system. Mm -hmm. And bang, I was shot out of that. Um, anyway, I, I, I left that <laughs> experience on the next thing I was in my bed. I mean, it was like <laughs> instantaneous. Wow. Um, as if like, you know, at, at, in, in that realm. When, yeah, so it, from no tolerance for yeah Sorry. so if you when you're in unity then you can remain there but if it becomes dualistic then you're back in your bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's anyway so the, the sequence though because the 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 shaking is actually um the activation of the etheric body so the it's the etheric body which leaves the physical body and then floats on up and then the kaleidoscope sounds like the um, the astral realm, and then moving through the astral. In, well, that was. It sounds as though it was um, the certainly higher astral, maybe into the causal. Yeah, I mean, I I don't. Um, I, I in, over the course of time, I went to lots of different places. I went to some places that were quite similar to ours. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, um, just more peaceful. Yes, um, I went to some places that were worse than than, than, than ours, this. Mm. Um, and uh, and and there were times when that was a bit scary. I'm not going to get into all of this, mm. but uh, there was nothing close to to that particular experience. It was yeah. like way way. Um, I mean, 
the only thing I can say with those experiences is that they, I mean, they were, they were lovely energetic experiences. You know, the next day and, and for some time afterwards, my body was racing with energy. I mean, it really, yes. um, I don't think as far as spiritual unfoldment and, and realization concerns, I think it's not, there's no correlation. It doesn't mean mm. anything. I no. It's just uh, that when I look back now, they're just nice stories to tell. And, yes. um, and funny enough, I, I still, I still have them, but less and less uh, frequently now, um, yeah. and, and nothing to that extent. Yes. Um, um, there were there were occasions when I couldn't even get out. I would I'd feel stuck in in a realm or in the astral, and I wanted to return, and I couldn't return. It was uh, quite, um, um, and not that it was terribly scary, but it I mean it really was an interesting mm. time. Mm. But so, uh, uh, anyway, back. Sorry. Sorry, Daryl. So that so having those experiences went on for several years. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, they did. Yeah. I mean, um, I haven't had one now for a few years, but the, uh, I have. I have a lot of sort of flying in dream, flying in sort of uh, lucid. I do quite a lot of lucid dreaming, but I. Yes. Um, but they're generally fairly short now. I, I don't. I, those. The, I. There were times when I actually spend some quite a bit of time in, in those places. Yeah. Um, uh, do you, so do you fly, to judge time. Pardon? Do you fly in the dreams? Well, it, the, so the, it's like navigating is quite difficult because it works on intention and it works mm. on, uh, on, you know, you say you, you can't like flap your arms. Or, no. <laughs> funny okay. enough, um, yes, it's effortless, I, you it's you're not really aware of your own body um, mm. as such. I was never aware of, I mean, I, I don't remember even seeing my body, you know, mm. it's just me. Uh, yeah, and I know we spoke about it previously. It was very—it's still very dualistic. There was me in the world, the same as it is here. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you want to generally, the the normally whatever happens in your mind, it, it, depending on where you are, it can manifest immediately. Mm -hmm. So you uh, so um, one needs to be quite careful what you think about and what you focus on, mm -hmm. because. Uh, what normally happens is if you become confused or you have contrast conflicting thoughts, then you lose that immediately. You find yourself back in bed. Yes. So you kind of, um, fortunately, I think the meditation was helping, but I, I could have, um, I could hold a level of concentration to keep myself there. Yes. You could never daydream in the astral or, or, or think, no. oh, I wonder what it would be like or anything like that. Mm. You would, um, you would, uh, uh, whatever you thought, depending on, but sometimes it was instantaneous. You could like manifest things like straight mm -hmm. away in front of you. Yes. Um, so, but, but to interact with people, you had to be focused. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think a lot of those uh, people were possibly thought forms, if not all of them. So it was, it's a, there is a, one can actually tell a difference between a thought form and, and what I thought of as, as another actual being. Yes. And that's another story completely. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so uh yeah so things carried on with the swamiji and uh um i you know I, funny enough i thought you know you know i was one of the lucky ones <laughs> and everyone else uh you know it was um everyone else they were on the wrong path you know we i was on the right path um not not too much like that but i remember someone coming with uh, uh, a course in miracles and, and and kind of looking down on that person saying geez you know here's this guy doing the course of miracles you know i've got the real thing yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's quite crazy um meanwhile i mean i think he was much closer to the truth than i was probably in those days but uh so so as happens with a lot of these guru type things is there were um some discrepancies or some mm -hmm. incidents happened. Nothing to me personally, um, yeah. um, but we kind of parted ways. Uh, yeah. So the um, I, when I look back on the experience, I still look at it as a positive experience, but most definitely. Sure. Um, and I just obviously uh, put put him onto too much of a pedestal and, and held him on too held him to too too much of a higher level almost. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so that was kind of my a big lesson for me because I know you um, always say um, uh, one's own authority. One must, um, uh, you know, don't give one's authority away. Yeah. Uh, you know, I learned that lesson quite early on. You know, don't don't give 
one's authority away. Yeah. Um, but I learned a lot from him. I mean, um, I, I feel, you know, at that point, as it is with that, one feels as you're on the spiritual path, you know, mm. you're progressing to enlightenment. Mm. There, there, there's no way you're ever going to be enlightened. You know, there's, <laughs> there's no way I could get to where he is. It's impossible. You know, that, you know that's <laughs> yes. the thing at the time. So, yeah. uh, uh, you know, there's no way I could get to that sort of godlike status, but maybe in my next life or my next 10 life. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and which is, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, it seems a lot of spiritual people are like that, you know, they, you know, one never feels it could be, you know, it's, um, and enlightenment, the word in itself is, is, is something that's a bit crazy uh, mm. to my mind. Mm. So, um, so when this, when, when things finished with him, uh, that was in about 2006 now, um, yes. I finished with this, this Swamiji, the, then um, I actually lost interest in spirituality completely. Um, I, uh, um, I kind of, uh, you could say there were some bad uh, experiences or it became confusing to me, you know, mm. uh, you know, I'd worship this person like a god and suddenly yes. these flaws were showing. Yeah. So, um, so suddenly I couldn't, I didn't, I got confused with spirituality and, um, and, and, um, and at that time I had very young children. My children were two years old and mm. one was two and well, one was three and one was one or somewhere around there. Mm. And I was building a business. So, so then um, I basically stopped completely uh, for about 13 years um, mm. and, and built a business and, and brought up my children. Mm. Um, and then uh, in 2019, uh, my business had, was extremely successful at that point. It, it had uh, not like super, super, but at, on my level, it, was, uh, it had provided more than I could really want. Um, and uh, and I was uh, li lying on a beach. Uh, I was on holiday when everyone else was working, and I was living like this little higher life. And um, and I burst into tears on the beach. I was lying with my wife. We were on this idyllic beach, uh, and there was no one there. I mean, it was like an absolute perfect experience. And and I just made the most money uh, that I ever made. Mm. Um, and I burst into tears. Um, like I was deeply unhappy. Mm. And uh, so then I kind of realized, well, you know, something is wrong here. And uh, uh, at, at that time, I, I was uh, very bad. I had quite bad insomnia, very, very bad insomnia, actually. Mm. And I didn't think, oh, now I must get back into spring. Now we've dated forward to 2019, beginning of 2019. Mm. Um, so I thought, well, you know, I now need to solve this insomnia problem. So I thought that was the cause of my problem. Mm. Um, yeah, so then uh, I, uh, uh, I, then I kind of thought about it a lot, a lot, and I thought, well, the insomnia is caused by fear. You know, the reason I'm not sleeping is I'm fearful. You know, at night I'm fearful. Mm -hmm. So then I started these sort of uh, these mantras, you could say. Um, you, know, you know, I will overcome fear. I am not fearful. I will overcome insomnia. It was quite. Uh, it was an interesting progression, really, but it didn't take long for me to realize that this was totally crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, then, I, then I, um, I realized, well, then I realized that, well, fear was actually an absence of love. So, you know, so then I changed my mantras or my aff affirmations, if you sorry. Mm -hmm. I changed them to saying, I am love, you know, you know um, I, am, I am love, I already am what I wish to become. And so, um, and at this point, I, I, you know, I'd stopped meditating back in 2007 or, uh, and so the, all those years earlier. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, well, you know, I, I need to solve this problem in my mind. And I started meditating again. Um, and then using these sort of love meditations, was, uh, that kind of really got me back, you could say, on, on track on, on spirituality. Um, yeah, it was interesting. So the first few people I spoke to or books I read were, were all on sort of things that with love in them because I thought, you know, I was a, you know, my problem was I didn't have enough love. You know, I didn't know how to love as well. <laughs> um, it was, um, and, and then there was just this progression um, that, that uh, went up through different uh, spiritual teachers, uh, mostly through YouTube and through books. I read a lot of books, everything I could get my whole hands on. Um, I'd read Eckhart Tolle way back in, in the early 2000s. And, and I'd say he, you know, he, Eckhart Tolle, he was one of the, um, uh, in those early days, he, he was um, 
um, had a, made a big influence on me. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I now know that that he, he, his whole concept is a more self improvement uh, thing. Yes. Um, uh, as opposed to realization. Uh, uh, to my mind, Eckhart Tolle is, is more um, more about self improvement and about yes, overcoming the pain. But excuse me. Yeah, more experiential, really, and and also. Um, retaining one's energy as you were saying about the understanding of the pain body and, and not um, identifying with those um, those frequencies yeah I mean there's the concepts are, are incredible and then I mean he writes about it extremely well mm -hmm. um, but one at that time one always feels you're on the spiritual path you know, you're on yes. the path to enlightenment up the mountain yes um, you know one day you'll get there so it's, it's there's still this eye that's going up going on the spiritual path yes um, and uh, you know, and 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 the eyes is something that needs to be improved. You know, it's not, uh, and so so you one needs a purification and yes. uh, and releasing and letting go. You know, yeah. that, you know that's the sort of that's the thinking behind it. You mm. know, mm. and um, and and the, and you know when my mind will quieten down. At that point, I started meditating quite a lot. I was, I was mm. meditating a fair bit every day. Yeah, um, but I. I mean, um, yeah, the, the thing with Eckhart Tolle is for me is there's a lot of psychology in it, you know, um, I think sure. it's, um, and, a, and a lot of things that were subconscious to a lot of people, he managed to bring it into, the, into one's consciousness. Yes. And you can't deal with something when it's in your subconscious. You can only, so, um, yeah, then I kind of progressed through Eckhart Tolle and there were, there were I mean, I really, I read a lot. Um, um, I, I went through quite a big David Hawkins fa uh, phase. I don't know if oh, you know yeah. David Hawkins. Yeah. <laughs> um, I still love David Hawkins, uh, even even though. Um, but I, but he was definitely his books are all about level of consciousness and progressing up the scale of consciousness, mm -hmm. and it's very it's great for the rational mind um, mm -hmm. because you know you can see where you are and you can see where you're heading, and you know if you sure. get this right, then you kind of move up the scale. Yes. Um, but he was also uh, quite a mystic, and um, and he had many mystical experiences. And I think he was an extremely accomplished person. Uh, mm. uh, and um, and 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 for me, he was full of love, and uh, he was a real character. And he laughed a lot, and he was full of love. And a lot of teachers are kind of quite dry, mm. whereas for me, um, he wasn't that at all. No. And I spent many months going through his material and. and uh, there, there was a time when I thought he was the bee, bee's knees, and and, and uh, yeah, I mean, it just was just a, a pro, progression that I was going through. Yes. Um, um, yeah, and then, um, but yeah, then then I kind of uh, uh, started moving. Uh, I actually then sold my business. Um, um, I because I, I I realized that you know, so I'd I'd been cultivating the love. And, um, there were some good books from Michael Singer, um, uh, you know, Untethered Soul, and mm. about living with your heart open. And, and I, I actually knew nothing about the heart and, and dropping into the heart. And, and, and that was really, that was quite, uh, quite a big thing for me. Uh, um, you know, I, at this point now, I was actually able to feel my heart opening and closing. Whereas um, the insomnia had caused me to, uh, to actually have a, to close my heart to close. Uh, I don't even want to call it heart chakra. Or, mm. yeah. um, it was, it's a, when one's heart closes, it's like a, a self-defense mechanism. Yes. You're protecting yourself. Uh, yeah. It's like a barrier between you and the outside world. Mm. Um, and, and then Michael Singer, I mean, that was something that he really, um, that, that was great for me. Uh, um, but um I think I mentioned this to you earlier, but uh, that, then I eventually sold my business and because I thought um, I wanted to be free and, and I thought my business was stopping me from being free. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I did sell it in the end, um, but uh, I subsequently realized that um, my business had nothing to do with my freedom. The, mm. the freedom is a total internal affair and it's yes. got nothing to do with in, any, any external event or... Yeah. Um, so should I continue in this? <laughs> yeah, so um, that was a couple of years ago, Daryl, was it? 
Uh, yeah, so we, I've caught up quite quickly now. So um, this was about the end of 2019. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, then I went in, then I got into sort of an Adya Shanti uh, um, phase. Mm -hmm. I don't know how well you know Adya Shanti. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know why I was with him. I mean, there's no doubt he's a great teacher. And um, But when I was, uh, moved to Adya Shanti, I was now kind of more uh, getting exposed to sort of more non-dual type teachings. And yes. so less of this um, moving up the path to enlightenment yes. and, and that. Uh, so so that was the sort of progression that I was, I was moving in. But, mm. but, uh, mm. You know, as my understanding grew, the yes. teachers I was moving to were, were kind of reflecting my understanding. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I spent many months going through reading his books. And uh, there one re really interesting book was The End of Your World. Mm -hmm. um, by, I don't know if you, if you read that one. I haven't, no. Uh, okay. Um, I'm familiar with Adya Shanti, of course. But, uh, excuse me? I, I'm familiar with Adya Shanti. I've watched oh, okay. his videos, but I'm, I'm not... Uh, okay. Any... He, he wrote many, many books, yeah. Um, so the... Yeah, that, so the, the problem with Adya Shanti, not the problem, I mean, like, there's, I have no problems with anyone, but um, for me, the problem was is that there's always this big event that's going to happen. And, and, and with Adya Shanti, in many of his books, there, there, there's like this big occasion when the stars align and, and uh, you know, and there's this huge freeing of consciousness. And, and, and you, know, that, you know, in other words, this self-realization, this event, that was going to happen at some point it was going to be marked by a big occasion. Something big was going to happen. You know? Yes. And, uh, and, and this is exactly kind of what, what I was thinking you know, the whole time is that, you know, this, you know, something big is going to happen, you know, mm. you, know um, you know, when is it going to happen to me kind of mm. thing. Yes. And, uh, so, so if effectively what I was doing in, the, in those days was, you know, putting something out in time. I mean, I was, mm. pre uh, you know, if, if it's, if you if one thinks it's going to happen in the future, it always is going to happen in the future, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we never get to the future. So it never happens. Yeah. So, um, but he he was he was great, and, and I learned a lot from him. Uh, there were, I think in those times, I mean, uh, I think one of the things that he says is is, is a realization is a destructive process. Um, but I, actually, this is something that came, comes a bit later. But the, in those times, you know, the, I, the, the, he refers to it, or his um, followers refer to it as, I, I had, I've got it, I, I, um, I had it, now I've lost it, faith. And, um, and that's a, it's a terrible, as, a, as a, someone who's a seeker or spiritual aspirant, it's a terrible thing to go through. Because you have these sort of peak experiences. Yes. And you're always wanting to re-experience them. Yes. And, um, and the problem is... Yeah. is one it's identifies with the peak experience and one disidentifies with the opposite. Yes. And, uh, and then there's suffering or, or you, there's grasping for the peak experience or, or yes. and, and pushing away a resistance of the. So, and I think that's essentially the cause of, of, of why um, people who seek or, or seekers suffer is, is that we, we all have these sort of peak experiences, and be it in meditation or. Yes. Um, or, or just in uh, just in life, one would walk around and feel really connected to everything. Mm. Uh, you know, one would feel the unity. You know, yes, you, you're part of the world and part of everyone. Yeah, and it's the most incredible feeling. And then, bang! The next day, you are like back into yes. separation, and it's like you've just lost lost yourself, and it's it's a painful experience. Um, so there obviously wasn't a complete understanding. But. Mm. Well, that, that stage applies to most people, most seekers, be, because from an ordinary life and then going into spiritual seeking, it, it tends to result in those sort of heightened experiences. Um, but that, that's, um, that's one of the last dominoes to fall, really, when we, when we overcome the idea that enlightenment is anything to do with an experience, because anything that comes and goes is always an experience and so that's not it and yes. um, so yeah so so how did that resolve for you daryl um well so how that resolved was uh it was becoming very painful being a seeker 
Mm. That's mm. if you could say how it resolved. It, it was. It's not. It was, It's not comfortable. There's a permanent agitation. Yes. You um, you've got these questions that you want answers to. Mm. Um, there's uh, 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 there's uh, you know you want that peak experience and and even I think at this point I, I understood that it that it wasn't about experiences. So you know one. It's easy to have an intellectual understanding of these concepts, mm. but experientially is a total different matter. Yes. And uh, one starts with the, so I, I'm sure at this point I, I well understood that. But mm. so then you, you know, it's, it's like meditating and saying, well, you know, I have no desire to have a good experience in meditation. Um, but there's a, there's an unwritten rule when you're sitting down on your cushion <laughs> There's very subtly in the very far background, doesn't matter how neutral your disposition is or effortless you're trying to be, mm. there's a very, very small expectation that you hope something will happen. Mm. Um, and maybe uh, that's just me with my bad meditation, but uh, that, that was, you know, that, that and, and that's what causes the, the suffering is, um, is wanting to... To, um, to experience these things or, or, or be in a certain state, be in the state of love. Yes. Um, and, and being in a state of connectedness as opposed to, um, yeah, so that, so, you know, that was to come later to understand that, you know, that resistance um, of not accepting what was there was actually the problem. Yes. Uh, it, it wasn't, the problem wasn't that I was, that I wasn't getting there. My problem was that I wanted to go there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then uh, after the Adi Ashanti stay, you know, it's funny how it happens, but you kind of get bored of the teachers and then you move on to the next, <laughs> you move on to the next one. Um, and so then I, uh, then I started getting into sort of the Advaita Vedanta type scene and the non-duality. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was familiar with the concepts. Uh, I understood it fairly well. Yes. But um, I, I started sort of, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I did at, at one point, uh, started, I started with the sort of neo-advaita type, yes. um, as we spoke earlier, the absolute perspective. Yes. Um, but that it didn't really uh, attract me in any way, and and we, and it's not supposed to as well. So uh, I mean that's why they give it. It, it it's actually frustrates the seeker terribly. Mm. Um, so and and this was actually roughly to when I roughly at the time when I first contacted you. I don't know mm. if you recall, but um, yes. Um, so about a year I ago. Was, yeah, it was about a year ago. I I basically, I for for at that point it had been two and a half years or something. And I was so tired of the seeking and mm. this agitation and this wanting to always have that peak experience and not, you know, and wanting to be in the now. I mean, that's one of the problems uh, with, with Eckhart Tolle, I think is like, you know, wanting to be in the now. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> a comedy, really. <laughs> it's like, and, uh, you know, it's just... I mean, to my mind, it's like impossible to be in the now. I mean, you can't, be, you, the I can't be in the, in the now. The I and the now are mutually exclusive. So, I mean, so, uh, and so I'd been, I mean, I really kind of, and, and I was now coming to the end of my tether and, and I, I was giving up. Mm. And, uh, um, and I think, uh, you know, I'd listened to the Tony Parsons type talks and, and, and they're great people and great talks. Um, uh, I'd really a great book was uh, Leo Hartong, yes, um, yes, which is sort of um, he's not quite Neo Advaita, mm. but he's close, well, close -ish. yeah. Um, but uh, but I, I still um, so I understood the 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 concept of the illusory self, and I and I understood the the sort of I mean I understood all the spiritual concepts that I'm not the doer and I mustn't doing an effortless living. At this point, I understood it all. I mean, I, well, to my mind, I understood it. But I I I mean, there's, there's a term in Afrikaans that I want to say, but I can't say it. It's not, but it's uh, um, I was cut full anyway. That the word means you've just had enough, and, and that's actually when I. Um, I uh, 
I, I sent an email to you and I don't know if you recall the email, but right at the end, I said, you know, I really just think I must give up this whole, I asked you a few questions. Mm. Like, I mean, that's the essence of seeking is always the asking of the question. Mm. And the question, the, and funny, uh, you know, the questions are, they're always there and, and the questions themselves don't really mean anything. Mm. Um, it's the, that energetic wanting that creates the question. Yes. The, the, yes. the, 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 it's this, the, the sucking, how I experience it. it was, mm. It's the sucking you along. It's mm. the questions that keep you sucking you. <laughs> Forwards, yeah. The, the, reveal, the self revealing the self. Yes. The self. Yeah. Um, it creates. And, but eventually, the, I mean, it's uncomfortable. I, 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 you know, I, I was pretty lonely. I, I didn't, I most, a lot of my friends had all fallen by the wayside. Not so much that we fell out, it's just mm. I became more of a loner. Mm. Um, my family life was fine. I mean, I lived a fairly normal life. Yes, but I'd had enough, um, and 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 uh, and it, and that was sort of period. It, uh, and, and I wrote to you, and basically I said, well, maybe I should just give this whole thing up. Mm. And in retrospect, I understand that you can't, as a seeker, you can't give it up. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible to give up seeking. It's no. like energetically not possible. Um, uh, to my mind, I don't. I don't want to sound like a. Um, but I had definitely come to the end, and and I have subsequently read about it. There's a period, the end of seeking, hmm. and uh, and it was about two days after I sent you the email. Um, I was, it was a Sunday night. I was lying in bed. Um, I sleep on my own for, for various reasons, and I was actually reading uh, Leo Hartong his book, and but likely reading. I mean, I I was now like. Spirituality. I, I, I wanted to get back into the world now. You yes. know, I was, you know, I wanted to uh, start a new business or, or you know whatever. But this, you know, it wasn't working for me. This whole spiritual mm. thing. Um, so I was reading it, um, but very lightly. I wasn't sort of taking much interest. And and suddenly there was this um, this release. Um, I mean, it wasn't uh, the way I think about it. It was like the air going out of a balloon. Um, yes. It was. It was just. An energetic release, and yes, and suddenly the the questions weren't there anymore. It was just um, the there was, and with that release, there was a, a feeling of joy. And but no, I mean, I've I'd heard of people, all these wow experiences, and and people laughing on the floor, and I I, I did maybe chuckle or something to myself, but it it was. Um, but it, uh, I mean, I, I knew I, I knew something powerful had happened. Um, yes. And 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 it wasn't something that that I had done or anything. It just mm. happened. Mm. Um, and and I suddenly said to myself, "Is is this it?" <laughs> <laughs> it um, the, and and I felt this uh, this energy go through my body. So I I um, I could really feel this. So th that whole night I was sort of. Could feel the energy pulsating through me. I, I couldn't sleep or anything else. Uh, there, there was, you know, it's it's not like one has achieved anything. I know this is like a lot of people say that, but it, mm. it, 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 it's not the there's not a happiness in that you've achieved something. It's just no. it's um, nothing has really been achieved. It's just uh, it's just it's just the end. It's just the the release. Yes. Um, and and. Uh, I kind of the next morning I was still kind of pretty much on cloud nine, feeling this this feeling and this energy, and and I, and I went to my wife and I thought and I said, to her, I wonder if she'll notice anything different about me. <laughs> and uh, no, she didn't. <laughs> there was no, there was there was I mean, it, uh, I mean, I felt very different inside. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, very quickly. Um, you know, I was back to normal, um, my normal life. It, yes. There was no prolonged sort of honeymoon period of bliss mm. and no. firecrackers and, and whatever it was. Um, but the, the difference now was that the seeking was over. Um, I, that, that the very first thing I did that next morning actually was write you an email mm. and say that, um, that, I can't remember exactly what I said. Oh, I, I said that I, I now understand that I now understand from a deep level that uh, that uh, that who I am, this this that this illusory self. I understood this illusory self 
from a deep level and yes. any seeking by this illusory self is futile yeah um it's something something along those lines yes. and that was the very first thing i did <laughs> other than say hello um <laughs> and uh you replied straight away and that's wonderful news um and uh and and that and, and then I finished the email saying, well, that my seeking has disappeared and long may it last. Mm. And um, and here I am a year later, and there's been uh, um, there's been no. Uh, the, I think to just to explain it a little bit better, there's it's kind of the reason why there's no seeking or, or no questions is because there is like an understanding. It's not it's not to say that I understand or no. There is just an, there's just an understanding. Yes. And, and it's not that everything is understood. It's no. just there, there is an understanding. Mm. Um, and uh, it's quite difficult to really describe. Um, and the absence of the seeking is something which, it's nothing that's added. It's something that's kind of taken away, which is, uh, it, it, it certainly brings more peace and more stability. Yeah. Um, so the... Yeah, so that's kind of been the last year where um, I think what you mentioned or what some people call integration or embodiment. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that most definitely is something that I've seen quite strongly. So the, the, mm -hmm. you start, one starts living from this, um, what John Wheeler calls presence awareness or, yes. or um, uh, what you might call the wisdom body. Yes. So there, there's no doubt that that becomes the, the foreground yes. and, and the, the mind becomes more the background. It's not always the case. Yes. Um, but the mind is often, or, or one, one always gets drawn into thinking and 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 uh, and, and into emotions. Yes. But one yeah. is never totally. The understanding is has, has never been lost. So, yes. so, you know, one hears these things, but the, you know, it's like the blue sky and the clouds. Yes. So the clouds come over, but you now haven't forgotten that you're the blue sky. Yes. Whereas in the past, as the um, as the, I got it, I lost it. You, yes. you, know, you were the blue sky and now you're the now clouds, the clouds yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now they're just clouds but i still know them in the blue sky yeah and um and uh, the, yeah there are many it's not i don't maybe it's just my personality whatever i, I mean i don't um I, there's most definitely uh, a more and more peaceful but the integration period can actually be and, and adi ashanti calls it a, a destructive process mm. uh, it's it's basically the, the ego and all the energetic um, samskaras or, or that are inside you, one has to face the truth yes. now. Yes. You're now living from the truth. So anything that's not truth has to be faced. Yes. And to a large extent, it has to be re-experienced. Re mm. uh, can't, it can't be suppressed. No. And how so, have you, um, you found things um, experientially? Have, have there been any dramatic uh, invitations into emotional disturbance or anything in the past 12 months or i think because you've done lots of meditation over the years it seems to have been quite a smooth trail for you um well yeah i mean if you if one's talking about the dark night of the soul and things mm. like that i never experienced mm. anything like that mm. but um no it, it, it's difficult i mean i've got I've, you know my ego self uh, or my it's got lots of baggage the same as anyone else mm. um i've the, the difference is, is now that you know I'm aware of what they are, yes. and they, they clouds, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, and they're not. They're not. Uh, it's not in my subconscious anymore. Yes. So generally, um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I can quite easily be taken by something, but not for very long. Yeah. It's almost like a self-rectifying process in that the uncomfortable emotion triggers you to to re-understand. Yeah, it's so like a little um, alarm, isn't it? When there's- Yes, a, that's right. Yeah. It's sort of drawing your attention to review- Yes, something. to something's you know, now living not from truth. So it becomes uncomfortable. Yes. And uh, and so I actually stopped meditating after that. Um, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do sit now, uh, I mean, but I don't have a formal meditation. And mm -hmm. prior to that point, I actually, I stopped enjoying meditation. It was to me, it started becoming contrived. It was, yes, there was yes. a, um, there was a, uh, you know, there was a subject, it was, it was a dual process. Sure. Um, there was me, the meditator doing meditation mm. and doesn't matter how, how much I try and be effortless and neutral mm. and mm. I couldn't. 
break then. Black break then. <laughs> and um, so do you just I, well, so when you're sitting now, do you tend to just sit and watch forms appearing effortlessly? So just whatever's arising, whether it's thought or an emotion or a sensation. I would normally sit if um, if there was some division. So um, if if something didn't feel right, it'd be like a call to invest. So I'd, so I would say I call it now self inquiry. Hmm. So yeah. I would sit and and if if a um, I was overcome by a, a sense a bad sensation or bad emotion, uh, you know I'd say well, what is not being understood, hmm. and 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 that automatically then. Um, it's uh, it's it's different to uh, releasing or letting go. It's, um, so you know what is not being understood, and then one moves automatically back to the understanding. Yes. And so you, I don't try and get rid of the um, the emotions. I don't no. try and remove them in any way. Yeah. They. Um, but you um, kind of review them. Well, yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not so much reviewing. It's just they. They become an. In, I'm not saying that they become less interesting. You don't yeah. energize them with yeah. with, uh, with interest or yes. Um, it, uh, definitely, it, it, one 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 technique which is quite useful, and one people might say this is doing, but I, I don't look at it that way. Is, is you 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 can just try and experience the emotion to you know the, you, you know to really experience it. Like where in the body is are you feeling that emotion? And um, and that and automatically, when you experience the emotion like that, you automatically start living from what would you call the wisdom body or from presence awareness, yes. because yeah. because now you experience it in with within you. Yes. Um, yeah. So it, it's subtle in that it's not a practice and it's not really a dualistic practice. It's more mm -hmm. like a sort of falling back in, into understanding. Mm -hmm. um, Something that was very uh, interesting for me when it started before the, the sort of the realization, actual realization, is, is the um, awareness sort of, uh, we also spoke about this a bit earlier, I just thought I'd mention it, but the, the subject of object uh, awareness. Yes. Um, how I, I started um, looking from uh, looking from a perspective of, of, of no, uh, there's, there's no uh, there's no subject and there's no me and there's no object out there yes um and that just ha happened spontaneously at first um i started noticing uh trees especially because i'd always been interested in trees mm. they were the first that sort of appeared to me and and they appeared this radiantly standing mm. what what now one can see they sort of stand in consciousness yes uh, um, and and how one would experience things almost for the first time, um, purely because uh, you, we've taken away that filter of the eye, um, yes. you know, and 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 you, one can do that with uh, not do that, but that one's senses are all like that, you know. Mm. So it's not only sight, um, mm. Mm. but um, yeah, I, you know. Yeah, I think the main thing is is I think people take the whole um, self realization thing maybe too seriously almost in a way. You know, it's like it's a serious practice, it's a serious yeah. thing. That's you know, and, yes. um, and and I'm just looking back because I, I took it mm. very seriously the whole thing. You know, and 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 you know, and we need to achieve these things. And you know, one yeah. you know, this, and do you and, feel uh, looking back at the uh, you know the various teachings and practices and methods and the teachers um do you that, see that seeking or, or that sequence as, as something that was kind of presented to you uh because the way it is for lots of people when you're engaged in that it seems as though you're doing it but actually when you review it and you're looking back through the gateless gate you kind of notice it was presented to you and it couldn't be any other way really yeah, so obviously from, um, so how I look at it is that I'm both the, the, the ego self and the infinite being or the self. Yes. So it depends on which perspective one's yes. looking at it from. So, so from the perspective uh, of, of the ego self, mm. uh, one, one is the doer. And, yes. You know, but, um, but if one from the perspective of one's true nature, the one is not the doer at all. And, uh, 
you know, it, it is interesting how if you take, I had the science in, and then Deepak Chopra arrived who, mm. he, and he bridged that gap perfectly for me. Yes. And, uh, and then I had this sort of issue with love and, and, and then we were on David Hawkins and, and mm. Michael Singer. Um, yeah. And then I sort of progressed up to, well, well Eckhart Tolle was sort of in there as well, totally. And, uh, and um, yeah, so, I mean, well, that's the, 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 the difficult paradox is that it, it appears to be a, a seeming path that, we, mm. that we're on. Mm. And, and so, like, especially as I've described it now, you know, this is like the path, this is the path up the mountain, you know. Yes. But, but, but it, it's it's not actually you know it's not actually a part that it, it, um, um, it really just looks like that when you look backwards. Um, um, funny enough, now when I look at pictures of me in the past, it's kind of a little bit odd, a little bit strange in a way because um, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's almost like it didn't actually exist. It's just. Yes. Uh, it's like a memory in the now, you know, and I think it's the same with with all of those. So, to answer your questions, I I, I think um, everything does happen all, all, automatically. I mean, it is, um, but um, but when you experience yourself as the ego self, um, that is not your experience. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, That's yeah, great. I, yeah, it's you. Yours. Um... Your experience has been relatively smooth in some ways because it's, you know, you seem to have quite a stable childhood and, you know, you have a stable marriage and children. And um, you, it's interesting the way you were saying that, that you've spent a lot of time alone, that even when you followed Swamiji, that you, you were still alone, really. And in some ways, that's a blessing because you've just you followed your own intuition and you've been in your own little cave in a way. And so it's- I didn't have to go to the Himalayas. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that's, yeah, it's, mean, it's, it's, it's nice to hear that sometimes because you, you know, some people do have a very dramatic experience, but it, it's nice you've just been conducting, um, you know, the whole process and maintaining stability, you know, with your business and your family and your, your marriage and everything and it's all still intact that's great yeah i think maybe that is a mistake that people make is that they i mean look i have sold my business so i'm I, so i don't have that anymore mm. but the you know they feel that 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 this you know it's important to make these big changes because mm. this big event is going to happen and, and mm. even if there's a subconscious thinking of that then that's yes. what will happen in your life you yes know? But it's t it's really not necessary at all. One no. could, uh, um, to my mind, from my experience, you can live no, a total exactly. And it's and the realization is really nothing special. It's 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 just um, it's just the understanding of what you always were. Yes. In, in any case. Yes. So, um, but I think um, it is destructive from from the ego perspective. So, um, depending on on one's level of uh, of involvement with the ego and, and belief that you are you know I from a, a fairly young age I've kind of always never really quite bought into the world mm. system and, I, and I've always said it's you know I've never I've always understood or thought that it's something's not quite right yes um so you've been on the sidelines quite a lot of the time have you not really getting to um well so I think if one is sort of very invested in, in, in one's own ego self and, and, and to a huge extent, when that, when that drops away or what doesn't drop away or is when it's seen through, it's yes. an extremely painful experience because, yes. you know, now what, you know, what is left, you know, mm. you, you know, it, this is who I, I was and, and yes. now this is gone. Yeah. Now I don't know who I am. And, and mm. the problem is, is then what happens is, one just moves to the next thing. One's ego self then grasps on the next thing and says, "Well, I'm not that now, but now I'm this." Yes. Uh, you know now, you know, and then the last final grasp is when, you know, one decides to become a spiritual teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to maintain the yes. Any, you know, you know, and 
I mean, and it can be in many guises, you know, you, mm. you know, you can, my ego, you know, I could have a rich ego or say, yes. you know, you know, I've, you know, I don't like material things, you know, I'm, uh, I've no interest in anything material. And, mm. uh, you know, I live a frugal life with, you yes. know, in my little cabin in the woods kind of thing. Yes. Your ego is just as strong as someone living in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Certainly. Um, yeah. It's been so, nice for you in a way that the, it's been quite a subtle transition because you weren't too heavily invested in the worldly experience at any point. I think that really. possibly could could have been it, yeah. So, um, 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 you know, I'm still in a transition. I, I don't know what's going to happen down the line. So <laughs> one has to be careful what one says. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, 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 it's very accessible. But the thing is, is that most people don't really want it, you know. Um, mm. Um, most people uh, just want to improve the, their they want they want to improve themselves. Mm. Yeah, you know, they they don't want to know who they are, or, yeah. or you know, and um, and I think if if anyone is committed, I mean the, the problem is you can't, one can't be committed. You can't say, well, I, I am committed. It's like it's like saying your <laughs> ego is committed to become self-realized. I mean, it's, yeah. Um, but if there is commitment for whatever reason, mm. uh, it, uh, you know, one will, one will, one will, one will, um, yeah, it, I'm not going to say it will happen. It will, it will be seen. It will be understood. Yes. It, because it's uh, what we are already. It's right. Yeah. So, mm. but, um, yeah, well, yeah, any, so that's, uh, yeah, that's as things stand uh, at the moment. Um, that's great. We might have to do this again in another year's time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, sometimes it's interesting to have a follow-up because there is a, it, it's simultaneously totally seen and totally clear, but in, in terms of the absolute and the relative, there is still the potential for progression. But as you were saying, it's a, the, it's a sense of adventure that you have now, really. It's just... It's not knowing, but being comfortable with not knowing and um, just uh, seeing where it takes you, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, it's it's both at the same time. So there's a part of me that's totally comfortable with not knowing, and there's a part of me that would like to know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm quite see. happy to be both, to be both. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. You know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, you know, you know, in, in the world, you know, it's often not brought up, but we all have to make a living and we, we all have to live. Um, and one doesn't know, you know, where, where the financial resources have come. So, hmm. so there's a part of me that would like to know. Yes. But then there's a part of me that's quite happy with, with the ride. Hmm. So, and uh, that, yeah, that's my, my experience. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Daryl. That's been really helpful. And uh... It's, yeah, it's it's a great uh, a great sequence, really. It's uh, it's nice the way you know lots of the the, the well known teachers feature in many people's um, sequence of experiences, and um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's wonderful though that it became totally clear for you and um, that you're a, a year into it and it's um, still totally stable. So that's great. Uh, thank but you that's, David. but that's the that's the nice thing when it's when it's realization there's no going back you can't go back to identifying but no. um, if it's only experiences that can come and go that's right yeah you um i think it was jim newman who said you once you once you know father christmas is not real you can never get back to thinking he is real again <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like that <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah. But well, David, thank you very much for, uh, for your help and your openness. And I always enjoy talking to you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you too. It's, it's just so nice uh, for conversations with people from all around the world, just um, really to inspire others and let them see that realizations attainable and available. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, Daryl. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.